We keep hearing people say they don't feel good about the economy. And I can point to one economic number after another to try to convince you that things are really good. But if you're like a lot of people, it doesn't matter. So is it the economy they're talking about? Or is that really code for life? How do they feel about their life right now? About everything? Because there are a lot of things out there leaving people kind of feeling meh. I'm gonna give you one example. Connecting with friends and family. It is very different after the pandemic. One thing we have been missing post COVID is connection. It's been widely documented we are in a crisis of loneliness. Great Britain has designated a minister of loneliness. One county in California has declared it a public health emergency. And while working from home has opened up job opportunities for people across the globe, it has also led to hollowed out city centers and empty office buildings where there's just not a lot of people or chances to connect. Couple that with the presidential election where it is looking more and more like a rematch between a 77-year-old and an 81-year-old. And polling shows neither inspires a feeling of newness or optimism in the way that Obama, Clinton, or Ronald Reagan did. So when you take that and add it to higher prices on some everyday things that should give us joy, like going to a concert or a sporting event, or when the price of a Happy Meal doesn't even make you happy, that starts to change your outlook. Put on top of all of that, our divided, grievance-driven media, and this feeling that others are getting ahead, then when the pollster calls and asks how you feel about the economy, i.e., how you feel about life, despite all the good, positive facts out there, is it really a surprise that people are saying they just don't feel so hot? With us for more, Neil Irwin, Chief Economic Correspondent for Axios. So what's your take on this? Why aren't people feeling it? Uh, look, Prices have gone up a lot since 2019. There's no question about it. Inflation was really high in 21 and 22. That's a long time ago now. Like, things have been, inflation has been coming down since then. But even the low inflation we've had is on top of what we had in 21 and 22. So you still have people with higher prices. Yeah, there's jobs out there. People don't, uh, you know, it's great to have great job opportunities. But as you're saying, people just feel bad about the entire environment. People feel bad about the post-pandemic. Everything is felt messed up. Uh, and that legacy is is not going away quickly. It's going away slowly. It's not going away quickly. What is going to change it? Is there one trigger? Is it interest rates getting cut? Uh, so time seems to be helping. We've just in the last couple of months gotten some really good numbers on consumer sentiment, consumer confidence. These, these surveys that come out every month, they have taken a big swing up in the last couple of months. Um, the question is, does that happen on a time scale that really helps Joe Biden in the election in, in November? Or is this a much slower play thing where people aren't going to feel better until years pass of, of a solid labor market and, and declining inflation? We don't know that. But if we do get a rate cut, right, one of the big issues when you think about people out there trying to buy their first home, it's not happening. Do you think we're going to get a rate cut before the election? And assuming we do, when will people start to feel that? Yeah, interest rate cuts are probably coming, probably not March. Uh, that's what uh, Jay Powell, mm -hmm. the Federal Reserve Chair, kind of signaled last week. Uh, a lot of his colleagues have been saying the same thing. Uh, probably not you know, next month, but there probably are interest rate cuts from the Federal Reserve coming. Uh, it might take a while, might be May, June. Um, uh, I think we've already seen, though, the, the prospect of rate cuts has gone into the stock market. The stock market's new highs every day lately. Uh, that's a good sign for wealth. That's a good sign for people feeling good. The job market's on fire. Job growth is incredible. Uh, those are all good signs. If, if that can continue while uh, inflation keeps uh, remaining low or falling, uh, that's a good mix for the economy. Again, it's just a question of does that kick in in terms of people's perceptions quickly enough. How fragile is the economy, though, right? Th thing, things seem to be very strong, very positive, only getting better. Are there any red flags you see in the immediate future? Look, there are always frag fragilities in the economy. There's always things that can go wrong. Uh, you know, war in the Middle East, uh, China and Taiwan, uh, you know, an energy crisis. Things can always happen. A banking crisis like we had last spring. Uh, there's nothing on the horizon that's imminent that looks like one of those risks. That doesn't that, not to say it can't happen. It's just that, like, right now, things are lined up pretty well for a solid job market, lower inflation. This is the kind of Goldilocks economy that economists have wanted for years. We've just had two straight years of the unemployment, unemployment rate under 4 percent. Hasn't happened since the 1960s. That's amazing. When you look at high prices, especially on things like the grocery store, right, when anybody goes to the grocery store, we're still feeling like things are expensive. People often point to this idea of greedflation which others would say, this is just capitalism, right? Prices are set at a level that people are willing to pay. When people decide 
things cost too damn much, then the prices go down. What is your take on this? Yeah, look, we're seeing some signs already that consumers are saying enough, right? I can't pay this much for eggs for, for everything else in my grocery basket. And that retailers, uh, wholesalers are responding by by trying to, to adjust their pricing, their mix. Uh, you know, I, I think the question is, will that continue? Is that something that's really set in motion? And can this disinflation continue? Uh, look, there was an opportunistic price increases back in 21, 22. Uh, companies felt like they could raise prices because there was huge demand finite supply. That's not the situation quite anymore. Demand is softening. Supply is rising. Those are coming into balance. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's a slow process, but it's happening. We no longer have a supply chain issue, or as Donald Trump likes to call it, supply change. Neil, thank you so much. When